It's, it's a big deal. It is. It's basically a body part you've had for five, what over, is it? Over five years. Wow. Yesterday, I went to the hospital pretty early in the morning. I had a liver appointment. She's my, she was originally my liver transplant doctor when I was evaluated. And now she's just my liver doctor. Like, not transplant, since thankfully I did not need a transplant. We went and saw her. Um, Peter and Elijah ended up just taking a walk outside while I went in for my appointment. And then we met up with a friend who has a relative in the hospital, so we sat outside with her for a while. It was a really, really life-giving time to spend with her. And yeah, so yesterday at the hospital we started a vlog. We didn't end up finishing it, so here's that footage. Good morning, guys. Uh, it'll tell us up here. Uh, four, four. Deep purple. Deep purple. Uh, we are at the hospital this morning. Um, what did you call this? Hmm. Um, uh, what? <laughs> a pointless liver clinic? Oh, yeah, pointless liver clinic. <laughs> well, we say that because we're just here at the hospital for a liver clinic. Usually we kind of combine it so it doesn't feel pointless, but Mary's liver is pretty stable, so yeah. it's like just to check in with her doctor. And we used to do these video the last couple years, but I don't know why this one's not. Okay, okay, sorry, we got on the elevator and it feels really awkward to yeah, vlog in an elevator. <laughs> um, yeah, typically I do my liver ultrasounds or MRIs or CAT scans or whatever I'm gonna do. And then my liver doctor will obviously look at those and make sure I'm doing okay. I didn't have any of those recently and I always do blood work and she always looks at it online. So I don't know, it just feels like I don't really have anything to talk about, except I do have one thing to talk about. I'll tell you guys about that later. Hi, cute. I'm talking to you. Me? And both of you. There wasn't much to update after my appointment. Everything looks... I think the screw just fell out of the camera at this moment and I see it on the pillow. Hold on, now the screen is falling off the camera and I need to put my coffee down and I don't wanna lose that screw. What is happening? It's a very small screw, can you see that? It's very tiny. It probably just looks like a bug. Yeah, there's nothing really to update. Liver stuff is, is stable as it usually it is. Hello, Peter. Hello, Problems? Oh. <laughs> you need me to screw them? Watch out, watch out. Sorry, I should put my Precious coffee down. Coffee. You'll Wait. probably hear a little it's like being at the dentist. You'll probably hear the the drill in the background, which is a screwdriver driving this tiny screw into the camera, which is you. Um anyway, everything is fine and stable, although we didn't really have basically I think in the computer system there was some sort of an error. So there was no order for me to get an ultrasound. Usually I would have an ultrasound and then she would go over that with me. But the update is I'm gonna go get an ultrasound. It's probably gonna be in October and then, yeah, it's all good. I mean, she, she pulled up my endoscopy and just said like, you look good and it looks great. So all is well. I'm very thankful for a stable liver and for that matter, a stable body. We also talked about, I don't know if I wanna say this without you. We talked about taking my feeding tube out. Yeah! It feels kind of crazy that you guys have been with us for so many years and you guys were with us when we were having first conversations about I'm not able to maintain my weight, my appetite is so poor I can't maintain my weight. and. Um, you know, five years ago, I got this feeding tube. Over five years ago, I got this feeding tube and it was extremely helpful and I've used it for feeds and then also for medication, liquid medication. And then now, 
I haven't needed it for feeds. I've maintained my weight, um, my appetite is good, and I'm no longer taking that liquid medication I used to put through my tube. And if I do need it, I can just take it by mouth. Yeah, I, my mind keeps going back to that trip in Florida when I swam with dolphins. I guess that was around, I think I had already had the NJ and it fell out and it was determined I needed to get a surgical feeding tube. And on that trip, I think that's when I got the call that we were scheduling the, the surgery. I'm not sure why my mind is thinking about that, but that was also our, our only time we've ever done a meetup. You look kind of creepy. Oh, sorry. In Florida. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, fun. you guys have been with us for all the journeys and I think, no, I know, but I was thinking maybe since we're going to the water, mm -hmm. maybe it would make sense to leave it in. Oh. Uh, Do you know what I mean? Although you could just like tape it up, put a take of the room over it or something. Yeah. And it's no different than right now. Like obviously if I swim, water can get in. But it's like Less. being blocked. I mean, I think I might wait. I think okay. I might wait just a couple of days, but basically I thought you were about to take it out on camera just now. <laughs> okay. No. I'm, I'm envisioning the video. Are you? Yeah. It's going to okay. be like a, a montage. You, you guys wait for it. What? What sort of thing? Oh, are you getting teary eyed? Um, I could if I think about it too long. If I think about those really sick days when I needed the feeding tube, that, that was hard. I was thinking like the taking it out video, we could do like when you try to pull out your child's tooth with a string and the doorknob. You want to do that with your feeding tube? Yeah. <laughs> or guess. something like that. I, I, don't, I think the last thing you want to do when taking it out for good is damage your stoma. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Yeah. Let's be real. We probably won't do anything exciting with it, but. It's exciting to take it out. It's, it is actually very exciting. The feeding tube. My feeding tube has been pretty low maintenance. I've never had granul granulation tissue or whatever that is. I've never had that. Right. I have had buried bumper syndrome right at the beginning. I had like post-op, I had some issues, but maybe a month or two, maybe longer, maybe two or three months after placement, I was like, this hurts really bad. And we went into the surgeon's office and he, they um, did an ultrasound to look at the internal like abdominal wall. And they were like, oh, the balloon is like pressing in. So you should tape it so it holds the button down. So the balloon is farther from your abdominal wall. I've had it taped for over five years. Yeah. I changed the tape one to two times a day. Like it, it's, you say it's low maintenance, but you have done regular maintenance. Oh yeah. It's kind of like a car. If you do your regular maintenance, not always, but often you can prevent major maintenance. And that's what Mary has faithfully had that sucker taped. Oh, that sucker's taped, man. I mean, part and of it- And gauze. Part of it is that it leaks. And so I have to have gauze on there. And I've learned before I had to tape it, I'd have gauze on there. What did I think? The gauze was just gonna stay there? It would fall out in the store and then I'd look down and there's my gauze on the floor and I'm like, that's disgusting. Like your intestine juice is on it. <laughs> but, um, uh, did, so did you get the screw in the camera? No. What's happening? I, the screwdriver I had was too big. Okay. So we're gonna take this feeding tube out in a couple of days, probably after our trip, or you know what I was thinking, hmm. if it falls out during the trip, there so be it. You know, usually I bring an extra feeding tube with me. It's never fallen out though. Yes, it has. It has? Peter. You weren't in the room when it happened, but I was in the bath. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. And it fell out. But, <laughs> um, 
I was thinking of like parasailing physical activities yeah. that you know that's when you think about it getting ripped up yeah I was really nervous when I was parasailing <laughs> I was really yeah but you know what I'm a couple of things that I'm really excited for well one it's totally freaks me out to take it out it totally freaks me out just like the what if what if I need it what if well that what if was answered this morning I called the surgeon who placed it so when I was in Boston a surgeon there placed the feeding tube he's no longer at the same hospital so I found where he's working at his new hospital I called the new hospital I talked to one of his partners who works with him explained it she was so helpful and she knew exactly what was going on whereas people that I've talked to at my current hospital are not familiar with this type of feeding tube and they were gonna send me to general surgery, which they probably wouldn't know either. Anyway, I talked with somebody from the surgeon who placed it from his office. So basically my question is, in the future, five or 10 years down the road or whenever, if I end up needing a feeding tube again, can we not go through that ginormous surgery again? Can we just, if you're new here, I had a, like, the surgeon who placed it did a row in Y, row in J, whatever. However, if you know about that, you know what I'm talking about. It's like they made a pouch out of my jejunum and pulled it up toward my abdominal wall. So instead of a long J tube inside of me, it's a little tiny button. It's a G button. Yeah. And it's super easy for changes. It's never, has never gotten clogged. These are I think some of the reasons why he does that surgery that way. But anyway. Not a, not every surgeon or hospital does this method of making a little pouch. And so Mary's like, can I use this pouch again? Yeah, so if I needed a feeding tube in the future, could they go through my abdominal wall, create a new stoma or reuse the old one, and use the same pouch? And that was the question I was asking my current providers my liver doctor my cf team my gi person you know i was asking this question and a few days ago i was like ready to take the feeding tube out but i really wanted to get that question answered so that surgeon uh physician called me this morning and i asked my question and she was like yeah they should be able to as long as you know you go in ir they're probably going to put a needle through that spot where your stoma was and then they would put dye in there to make sure that pouch is still in there and then they could dilate the um, stoma. Anyway, we'll see. So thankfully that is future down the road, maybe if I need it, if category, right? Yep. But because I was able to get that answer, my mind can be at ease and I can take the feeding tube out. Yeah, Mary had decided, like, regardless of that answer, it's probably time to take it out. But yeah. it definitely gives a peace of mind yeah. to know that it might be able to be reused in the future. And so stay tuned in days to come. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's a big deal. It is. It's basically a body part you've had for five, over, what is it? Over five years. Wow. Yeah, five and a half years almost. Yes, it was a tool. As we've talked about so many times on The Fry Life, and I, you know, I've heard some of you guys talk about this as well. When your health is declining and you're needing more assistance, more maybe mobility assistance or um, breathing assistance or whatever it is, or like my feeding tube, viewing it as a tool in the tool belt rather than a bad thing. Just like, okay, this is going to help me thrive more. This is going to help me be able to do the things I want to do. It helped nourish my body. It helped me in the years when my appetite was so low. Um, there was so much stress about trying to fuel my body. My body was fighting so hard and all of that. So I'm thankful to be able to take that tool out of the tool belt. Literally. What? Out of my literal gut. Mm. My guts. Yeah, Mary's been amazing at just that simple perspective shift of, like, you could look at, look how this feeding tube limits me, but instead, 
looking at it as look how it helps me live to the fullest and and wow i just i never anticipated the stability mm -hmm. like i really this is what i thought you guys like when i started trikafta i thought if it can put a pause push the pause button on where my health is currently meaning three years ago i was not in a great place health wise if it could pause my health here, that would be incredible. I've got tools to, to get through. Like, this is a hard time, but I can get through this. Well, it didn't just push pause. It pushed the rewind button. And because my health not only stopped declining, I increased in my capacity to breathe, to eat, to absorb nutrients, to like my body isn't constantly on a treadmill fighting 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 burning calories as much as it used to i just i just never anticipated oh, wow it's just incredible well, and i think i've thought a lot about this recently when you are in the midst of the grind of health stuff you just don't even think beyond the moment you know like you can't you, yeah you don't even like imagine like what if this was different like you just do it and you keep going and like because i look back to those days and i'm like how did we like I, now looking back i'm like how do we do that and that, I don't know. and i think it was just like you put your head down and you live each day and we lived it to the fullest and yeah we still try to do that yeah we do and those those hard hard days when you're yeah, like Peter said, you don't have a choice. You just have to put your head down and do it all. And then also attempting to have joy in the midst of that and like enjoy parts of your day, even though a lot of it wasn't enjoyable. Mm -hmm. It really does teach you and grow muscles of yeah. making the most of every day, no matter what it holds. Yeah. And so on days when you need to go clean your bedroom and you just feel so stressed and tired, you gotta Not just today. do it. <laughs> yeah. well, well, okay, All right. one more thing and then we'll wrap it up. Not only did it press the rewind button, but now the eject button. Oh, I was like, where is this going? <laughs> okay, we're gonna press the eject button and eject this button. Oh, that's Out deep. That's deep. All right. Oh man, pros and cons to everything. Hmm. JTube, like I said in the beginning, has been uh, low maintenance. It is not without pain and all of that, of course. You know, I've got an, a, uh, what's the word? A strange object? A foreign, foreign object. object in me. And I don't know if it's the buried bumper thing or what, but every, like, maybe eight weeks or so, I start getting a pretty intense pain right in my feeding tube and they recommended I change my feeding tube about every three to six months and so I find that when I change my feeding tube with the new button that pain goes away for probably about six eight weeks something like that then the pain comes back I have no idea what that is it's been probably now two years or so doing that and it's fine it's totally understandable like I have a foreign object in me and I will be really glad to have that piece gone and you know when I'm wearing my baby in a baby carrier and like his foot is like literally standing on my feeding tube and it feels like it's going to pop out of me, which it might, <laughs> it no longer will because it's going to be gone. It's going to be a whole new scar to get used to. It's going to be different. I'm not going to be, yeah. Crazy. Yeah. It's, it's somewhere in between good riddance and I hope to never see you again and thanks for all you've done, dear friend. Mm -hmm. Why does it make me feel like I'm going to cry? Like, I'm just so, I think I'm just like in shock because we've only been talking about taking it out for like two weeks. Yeah. It just, I don't know, one night, I think I said something to Peter like, what would you think if I just decided to take my feeding tube out? Peter's like, sure, let's do it. <laughs> I'm like, okay, cool. And I'm just thankful. 
Yeah, yeah. it's stability that I never anticipated. It's of course stability that I wish I could give to some of my friends. And since I can't, then I'm going to take them, take what I've been given and make the most of it. And hopefully in a few days, I'll be tubeless. Stay tuned. <laughs>